This video is not for children under the age of 13 or younger. And I hate to say this, you know, this whole startup is all like weird. And there's a good reason. Today I want to talk about the FTC, Coppa, YouTube and how it also does not stay in the US and not just on YouTube. This whole copper thing is something that has been around since 1998 and is a ruling that serves to protect children of course. What is all that about and why you should be worried also as a watcher of videos and not just as a creator, especially if you're a creator outside of the US. Let's talk after the intro. Hey everyone, this is House Test and here's a new bite. You know, the FTC and the regulations that are coming starting January 1st, 2020, so just in like seven weeks, are going to affect not only US citizens and US companies, you know, YouTubers in that sense, they're working on YouTube, they're in general also affecting a lot more. I want to go a bit into the details, but not too specific because, you know, this is just a bite. But there's of course sources is in the video description down below that both of course explain where I'm coming from, what the original rulings are. And of course, for example, a lawyer who does also a great video on this topic with way more details, of course, way more knowledge that you should actually listen to. I'm just here to say, hey, if Kappa goes actually into action, this will not only affect the US YouTubers, this will not just affect YouTubers in general, this will affect a whole lot more. Just think back when the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, went active in May of 2018 from the EU, even people that were outside of the EU, for example, the US citizens had to deal with this issue, especially if you provided content for people that were potentially viewing a website, for example, inside of the EU. All right, so what is all this copper thing about? Where did we come from? Just a brief explainer. COPPA means the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. It was enacted in 1998 and was revised in 2013. Usually this law will always be revisited in every 10 years. But because of children's uh, advocacy groups, of course, uh, that were approaching the FTC, the FTC decided, hey, there is a new reform needed within not 10 years, but six years so far. Next year, 2020, this act, the Children's Honor Privacy Protection Act, will be renewed. And that has some consequences also that are leading over into YouTube. YouTube itself actually had some issues, of course, with the FTC, as they usually have to comply. But Google said for a long time, we specifically say in our user contracts that you cannot be 13 years or younger when you make a Google account and of course a YouTube account. But as the internet is, of course, you know, even people that are 13 years and younger, they can at least read and click on buttons on their own. So 10 year olds and probably even, I don't know, seven year olds by now can make an account without the parents' knowledge. And even if their parents know about that, that still doesn't mean, you know, that they can't just go on with a general Google account and use YouTube, you know, just like that. So what YouTube said was just in the end, smoke, there's nothing behind that. And of course, the FTC says the same thing now as well. And that's why in 2018, if I understood that correctly, again, I'm not 100% professional about this. I'm just, you know, a front end developer. Um, YouTube had to pay a fine of multiple millions of dollars. And they're, you know, handing down the ruling over to us as YouTube creators. Even if you don't earn any money, even if you don't fall into the threshold of having a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours in the last 365 days of watch time claimed, so you would be eligible for the monetization program, you still have to, right now, disclaim if your videos are made for children, which these open a still large gap of a general audience up to, you know, adolescent people and even, of course, people after that. And here's the weird thing, even if we flag it correctly, it could still mean that you are, you know, in danger. What are, of course, the first effects that could happen if COPPA comes through and the FTC would find you as a person? Well, first, let's talk about if your content could be 
reasonably enough at least claimed to be made for kids and you know i say reasonable the law sometimes does put in a way especially when they're made from you know a different generation that doesn't quite get how those things work so the official rulings are translated over by youtube in their help article subject matter of the video could potentially mean that your video is made for children. Whether the children are your intended or an actual audience for a video. Whether the video includes child actors or models. Whether the video includes characters, celebrities or toys that appeal to children, including animated characters or cartoon figures. I'm gonna go back and talk about these things individually in a second. Whether the language of the video is intended for children to understand. Whether the video includes activities that appeal to children, such as play acting, simple songs or games, or early education. Whether the video includes songs, stories or poems for children. Any other information that you may have to help determine your video's audience, like empirical evidence of the video's audience. What? <laughs> There's so many things here that are just plainly wrong. The FTC guide in the ruling actually goes even further. And they go as far as to say, hey, if you use words like cool, whatever, don't care. That also could mean that the language that you use is, you know, made for children or at least appealing to children. Oh my God. Do I have to read a full dictionary now to be, you know, as expressive as I can? to sound as confusing to a child as I can. And there's other things like, what does it mean if you have a cartoon character in your videos? What does it mean, for example, if you talk about video games that could potentially be aimed at children in its own nature and your video just by connection is also now assumed to be made for children, although it's technically not because again, here's all the problems how these things get flagged by YouTube, of course, they use machine learning. And this goes on into how also the FTC and other parties could potentially say your video was falsely flagged. Even if you said you made the video, for example, for not children, so you'd be eligible for things that come, of course, with the privilege of not being a child-friendly video, or if you actually said it correctly, and then there's no problem. So what are the things that could actually be taken away from you if you say yourself, hey, this video is made for kids. So if you say yourself, this video is, you know, friendly for children, then there will be the following actions that happen from Google and YouTube, of course, for that video. YouTube says themselves, Linked down below is the source. We will stop serving personalized ads on content that is made for kids. For me personally, we don't earn money on this YouTube channel. We are way too small. And even if we would be able to, you know, be big enough to be part of that system, it would still make just a few cents. So in my own mind, being, you know, the senior editor for YouTube here at The New Byte, I think we won't do ads for a long time. But still, if you stop getting personalized ads, the value of the ads on this video, of course, going way, 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 way lower because targeted ads, of course, are much more because the people that pay for those ads, of course, reach no audience. If an ad is not personalized and targeted, then of course, this means they're just throwing money into the wind and hope that something sticks. And of course, everyone who wouldn't pay for that wouldn't really do that. That investment just doesn't add up. Also other features on the actual YouTube video, if you flag your video as child friendly, will be deactivated. The ability to comment will no longer be available. Likes and dislikes will vanish. Subscriptions on the content will not show up on public lists. And overall videos will have minimum engagement options with made for kids content on youtube.com. So what you want to do is then, if you see all these things, is one, Make sure your content is actually not made for kids. Two, make sure that adults get that this video content is not made for kids. Three, you best gosh darn hope that you will still make good content in the end. And fourth, of course, you hope that the FTC still won't find you because you're just, you know, an average person just trying to make some, you know, content happen, even if they're not specifically for kids. You still want to make them at least, you know, appealing to a general audience, meaning, you know, people, of course, from 13 and uh, older, you know, just young adults who are still interested in, for example, in video games. If I would do a review on Death Stranding, I should hopefully make it clear. Okay, that's a bad example. But let's say um, I want to make a video on Fortnite. 
very cartoony still you know a shooter but you know even kids play that because i don't know how the ruling is on that but this cartoony action is still somewhat kid friendly um if i make a thumbnail with that i probably have to desaturize the thumbnail because if it's too colorful it could be appealing to children i have to make it you know in the title very specific that this is not something fun and cherishing although it could be a fun topic in the end and so many other things that you need to think about so yeah there's lots of factors that go into making a video in the future and also what is with all the videos that are out there already oh my gosh <laughs> that's another can of worms that we have to make up we right now have i think over 100 something videos and some of them uh, specifically not made just for adults and at least you know young people they could potentially be also of course be for children and I have to go in now and check every video although I'm not a US citizen although I'm not making any money on these videos and still say on these videos that could potentially be you know viewed from the outside as being made for children as made for children although I personally would disagree with that our candy taste test video, for example, that we did a while ago, like two of them, I would precisely, I would probably flag us made for children, just to be sure, because I couldn't really argue that this video is made for young adults and up. Because, you know, we don't swear in this video, we just happen to taste some candy and say if we like it or not. And really, even though we didn't have any intent to make this also, you know, viable for children in the back end now you know looking back from today i can't say this is specifically made not for children so i have to go in and take the hit and make this video you know basically vanish from youtube you know it's get list d list the problem with those public lists you know it won't be really shown in search results anymore and so many other things i could also just delete it i wonder how such a video would even you know be <laughs> safe from this regulation <laughs> And that brings me actually to the final section. You know, yes, as I said in the beginning, I'm not a US citizen and I still have to deal with these issues. And it all leads back, as I started in the video, how also GDPR affected, of course, not just websites inside of the EU, but also uh, big, large companies that make content that is, of course, available for people to be visited from the EU. It doesn't mean if they actually do it, just if there is an option, of course, for example, for EU citizens to visit an US website, GDPR takes an effect. And something like that will also happen here. If the FTC, you know, puts these rules in effect, they probably affect, of course, everyone now i don't really know and again i'm not an expert on this one so take it with a grain of salt <laughs> with a grain of salt bay oh no that's a that's a popular reference <gasps> take it with a grain of salt i don't know if this will actually you know swap over to eu people and let's just say even more you know globally if it happens to affect people outside of the us but if things like that get through there's a problem we can't know for sure and um you too Regardless of where somebody is, you know, located, they will still treat your content as if it's made in the US because they're serving it also in the US. And they will never probably give you the tools to, for example, disable content for specific audiences, you know, based on their geolocation. And if then there's VPNs and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really a big can of worms. And it's really something that keeps me as a, you know, tiny okay it's like growing content creator really worried if i'm doing the right thing how should i approach videos in the future you know should i make fun nets even less fun you know i just started experimenting a little bit with meme like thumbnails for example where i took the stonks thumbnail or image and make it my own version in this family where I actually recreated that same idea that that meme you know presented but of course mapped it over onto my topic and this more and more just makes it so much less fun to just make some fun content as a hobby on the website that is called youtube.com formerly known as broadcast yourself formerly known by a company that had a subtitle don't be evil so many things have happened in the last decade, well, 13 years by now, uh, <laughs> since YouTube has been founded. There's good things in there. I definitely think they're good. We need to protect the children. I think everyone can on board. 
can get on board with this that, you know, this act in itself is not bad. It has good intentions to protect the young children, not just in the US, but of course also by, you know, assumption, the world, because everyone in the world can use the service that is based in the US. So I hope the US citizens will, you know, be able to put the comments to use. If you are a US citizen, the FTC is still open for your comments uh, to be, you know, put on the website and tell them, hey, for example, your rules are so vast and so, you know, big in range, they could potentially affect just every video in the end and don't uh, really target the ones that you really want to target. YouTube will go in and use the machine learning algorithms and the bots to flag everything potentially as bad, although it doesn't have to mean so. And you as a creator probably need to be worried at all times, even if you potentially should never be worried. For example, because your content must just still <laughs> always be safe because you're too small as a channel, because you'll probably still in the end be viable enough to be by, you know, an average smart person to be viewed as okay not specifically made for children content creator you know stuff like that <laughs> and yeah um that's just something that keeps me going right now i want to do a video on google stadia actually right now i have it here since first day tried it for two days now i have some thoughts on that so if you want more stuff like that we actually go into tech and gaming here on the new bite and general gaming focus thing <laughs> subscribe of course and don't miss any new videos my name is house that was a new bite on copper ftc and everything that's happening right now around youtube and um yeah let me know in the comments down below if this video is not a flag by youtube as try for running because i probably i don't know i hope that the topic alone was you know too complex for children <laughs> we don't know in the end if that is a fresh order or not it's, it's an exciting time to be alive. And yes, hope oh, you have a nice day. Talk to you soon. House is out.